Okay, welcome back. Now I'm going to illustrate another demonstration cool demo. It's called Interference and Diffraction of Sound. And we're going to use the oscilloscope again and the same apparatus that we did for the velocity of sound. This time we're not going to rely on the Lesage's figure, right? So we're going to be testing out this is the equation for interference of a sound. When a sound wave comes, this is also true, the same equation that we use for interference of light. And if there's a double slit here, uh, this is an opening. And then this is another opening, so this is called a double slit. This wave will interfere with this wave, right? Uh, if the path length traveled by them is equal to each other, then you're going to get constructive interference, right? So on, in the center, you're going to get what's called central maximum, right? So then if I go off to a certain angle, uh, this wave goes like this, this wave goes like this, right? The, this, the bottom wave travels a bigger distance, right? by an amount equal to what? If you go like this from here to here, this is the distance between the slits, right? So then this one goes over here, this one goes over here, right? This is R1, this is R2. The path difference traveled by the bottom one is a larger distance by how much? R2 minus R1 is equal to what? Well, if the angle here is theta, this is D, it could be shown that this extra distance traveled by the bottom one if this is theta, this is theta, right? So this extra distance delta r, which is equal to r2 minus r1, is equal to d sine theta. So the more angle I, uh, I increase, the bigger the difference the, of the distances traveled by the bottom and the top wave, right? So when this d sine theta is equal to integer multiple of wavelengths, right, and lambda, then we're gonna get, again, constructive interference, right? So you're going to get central maximum constructive interference. Then we're going to go off to a certain angle. You're going to achieve constructive interference, then another constructive interference. Now, between the constructive interferences, you're going to have destructive interference, right? Uh, destructive interference. When does that occur? When d sine theta is half their wavelengths, right? So when d sine theta is equal to n plus half times wavelength. So we can test this equation out and see if this is working and use it as a way to calculate the velocity of the sound wave, right? So let's see how this works now. So I've got the wave here. I've got the, the function generator connected to the receiver, right? So for this one, I don't need this other one directly going from the function generator to the oscilloscope. When I did the velocity of the sound, I needed two wires coming from here, one to the emitter, and I need another wire going to the, directly to oscilloscope to compare their phase difference. This one, I don't need this one, okay? So I'm not gonna be utilizing Lesage's figures. I'm gonna be going directly to channel one. Um, you see, this is XY mode, but since I have nothing coming to the Y channel, I'm coming out of the XY mode, directly going into the X channel, so this is the wave. So then I can adjust, I can put the frequency to whatever frequency I want. I can adjust this distance till I get construct, till I get a central, nice central maximum. See, this is not good because this is a very low. So I want to achieve the distance between the emitter and receiver. I want to adjust that distance until I get the maximum amplitude. Okay. Right there. Right now I'm at maximum amplitude. So right now I am at zero degrees, right? Zero degrees. So then I'm gonna start tilting this. There's an angle measurement here. I'm gonna start tilting it till I achieve first minimum. The double slit that I have is here, you see? The difference between the two slits, the distance between the two slits is uh, 4.1 centimeters. So basically what's happening when a sound wave is going through one of this, and the sound wave is going through the other one. This is the center. One wave is going off to the side this way, and this wave is going to that side, and the distance traveled by this one is larger than the distance traveled by that one. But if that distance amount difference is half their wavelength, then you're gonna get destructive interference. So we're analyzing the interference of the sound wave from these two slits right here. So put this here back at the center. Okay, 
So then adjust this until you get destructive interference. Right here, they're kind of... This is the most minimum that we are getting, right here. It's not complete destructive interference, but it is pretty low. Right there. So right now I am reading about 7.5 degrees, 7.5 or closer to uh, 7.4, okay, on the protractor that is on the top. So then if we do, since this is minimum, this is called the first order minimum, d sine theta, n is equal to zero, so then you have half of lambda. So d is 4.1 centimeters, if you change that to meter, you get 0 0.041, sine of, and the angle was 7.4, sine of 7.4 degrees, then I'm gonna double that, then I'm gonna say the wavelength is equal to the velocity of sound over the frequency, right? And then whatever frequency I have it set to, I have it 40,110, 40,110. So then I cross multiply, I calculate for the velocity of the sound. I get velocity of sound is equal to 423.6 meters per second. So the result we're expecting to get is something again close to 345 meters per second. So again, you would do this multiple runs. One of the things you have to also make sure is to center the double slit right in the middle of the where the emitter is, right? Center that. So maybe I didn't center it very well, but you can kind of see the idea of it and how you can compute the the velocity of sound from it. So now let's move a little bit more until I achieve the next maximum. So this is the minimum, about 7.4 degrees. Keep going, keep going. This is now the first order maximum. Then you see, I'm gonna get second order minimum. So this is gonna be right here, the next maximum. So that's going to be 16.4 degrees, 16.4 degrees, 0 0.041 times 16.4 sine times 40,110, so you get 464. 464 meters per second. So we're getting consistent systematic error that's giving us the velocity of the sound is 464. Now what if we did it this way? What if we went to the next angle when I achieve uh, the next minimum, right? Keep going, keep going. Right about there. Now we get, we're getting 18.8, 18.8 degrees. So I wonder if we get a better result if we do it this way too. We say uh, d sine of theta two is equal to, now what is it gonna be? Three halves lambda, right? Three halves lambda. And then here I had d sine theta one, d sine theta one is equal to one half lambda, right? So this is the first time that I achieved uh, my minimum, this is the second time I achieved my minimum. So if I subtract these, d sine of theta two minus theta one, I'm gonna get what? Three halves lambda minus one half lambda, lambda. Then I can say lambda is equal to the velocity of sound over the frequency and then cross multiply. So then what, I, what would I do? I would take my 40,110, then I would take the distance 0.041, then you say sine of the, my theta two was 18.8 degrees, 18.8 degrees, minus sine of the theta one when the first minimum occurred was 7.4. Then that's equal to the velocity of the sound, okay? So definitely this is a better way of doing it. So whatever the inherent error there is, instead of focusing on the equation for one minimum, you can do two minimums, take their difference, right? Change the frequency, repeat the experiment, change the frequency, repeat the experiment, 
get different sign up data two, and then this is sign up data one, right? Get a bunch of uh, results for the velocity of the sound, and then average that out, right? So what's the equation gonna be for diffraction, okay? Diffraction, the equation is gonna be a little bit different. Diffraction is when the sound wave or the light wave goes through a single slit, whose uh, opening is A, and then the equation is A sine of theta is equal to N lambda, where N is one, three, five, seven, nine. And this is the equation for the angles that give you destructive interference. Destructive interference. So this is known as the equation for diffraction. So in our case, this is my single slit right here. The opening between this, that single slit, the width of it is 2.5 centimeters. So I put that here, 2.5 centimeter, right in the center. I try to center it. And then I'm... Okay, so for this one, I'm going to be basically looking for the first uh, destructive interference, and then after that, base our equation on that, right, for the destructive interference. So then you go like this. You move it to the side. And then right about there, that was the lowest. Right after that, it starts getting higher again. And then it starts getting lower. So right there, then goes down. So, so this is maximum. You see right there is the first minimum, right there. Okay, so that's going to be about... 17 degrees so we're gonna have here the a is equal to the distance uh, of the gap 0 0.025 meters so it's gonna be 0 0.025 sine of 17 is equal to 1 lamp uh, times velocity over frequency and the velocity is gonna be the frequency which is 40,111 times 0 0.025 sine of 17, okay? Again, uh, you can see from here how this would work. You could test the uh, N is one, N is three, N is five. You can test the N is one and N is three. Take the difference between the two. So you can do a variety of experiments until you get an uh, average value of the velocity and then compare with the theoretical velocity for that temperature in the air. So this lab teaches you a little bit about the interference and diffraction of sound. The same equations hold true for the interference and diffraction of light waves, okay? Thank you very much.